with ICE, which is the Intercontinental Exchange. But really, the reason why we're mentioning it is it is, in fact, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange. So there you go. As Nick said, these guys did so well, Jeff Sprechler and the guys that run the firm, that they would get to the stage where they're big enough to actually take over the whole thing. I've got the market capitalization here. It's the largest of the lot at $41.2 billion. Price to earnings ratio 25.9, dividend yield of 1.1%. The stock price looks great. That's going to come up while we're talking. Yeah, so, so people this who is had these have done super well. Yeah, correct. So um, ICE is the big, the big daddy of exchanges worldwide. 41 billion dwarfs the other companies yeah. that we're going to be speaking about. And ICE, like I mentioned, started their life in trading um, energy yeah. contracts. And they still do. About 20% of their revenue comes specifically from that area. Another thing we didn't mention, those exchanges are very important because they provide a hell of a lot of market data. And that market data is used by every Tom, Dick and Harry to create um, either a new index yep. or to create a, a risk profile of what assets I can have on the bank's balance sheet. So data is a really, really important drive. In some cases, they sell that data. In most cases, they do make a fortune out of it. But it is part of the sort of democratization of investing that people would like to say, listen, I want to be able to look up the price of something. And I ought to be able to do that without a charge. No, oh, I don't know if that's going to happen, though. It's like you're going to the vegetable market and you go to the guy and say, how much for tomatoes today? He says, give me 10 bucks and I'll tell you the price. It's like, what? That's ridiculous. <laughs> but that's how it works. Well, the, way, the, way, the way you put it, it does. But that's exactly how they make a lot of their, I wouldn't call them hidden costs, but you yeah. think they only make money out of buying and selling and trading and volume. But it's not that. Um, data is really important. So the big key for ICE is essentially on the options and futures market. Um, you know, the that's new right, because they own Liffey, which is the London futures exchange thing. And then they also have a similar business Absolutely. in the US. And remember, it's not just a US business. I mean, yeah. it's completely uh, um, uh, international the new york stock exchange was a major major deal they got a company and they called euronext exactly, which they because which they, nyc had yes. bought euronext already and now they got everybody wanted well. to buy a new york stock yeah. exchange about 10 years ago yeah. and this fail and that fail but actually ice got it absolutely correct that gave them exposure obviously to general equities which is still a very small part of their business but through the new york stock exchange and they managed to get a massive interest in in interest rate swaps and interest rate derivatives as well which are really important if you're speculating on where the interest yes. rate's going to go and in fact one of the key things that Brecha got right in the business was in that 2008-2009 crisis when there was all hell breaking loose yes, with the, credit the liquidity default crisis swaps. and so on. Yes. He went to the US Fed or the New York Fed and to the others and said, listen, you know, we'll help create an exchange which will then be uh, set up in order to facilitate the price discovery in relation to those contracts. Well, you know your stuff. I'm so impressed. So he <laughs> really, really got a huge lift. He was some country heck trading oil futures, yeah. and suddenly he was at the epicenter of uh, And that was New the York beginning market. of it all, essentially. So he's a great entrepreneur for yeah. the business and has really led that company from strength to strength. Share price, as we've seen, done incredibly well. Coming a little bit off the boil, mm. there are two factors that we need to speak about that will affect all of these companies that we're talking about. The one okay. is, is volume. It's mm -hmm. very, very important that there is volume going through the market. If the volume is low, like it is at the moment in the South African market, that will affect all the costs you charge on everything. It's a ripple down effect. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't been an issue for them at the moment because volume is actually pretty good. Markets have done fairly well worldwide. Yeah. The second um, issue is regulation. And um, we've definitely started to see that ramp up significantly, specifically now in Europe with this new thing called MIFID, which I'm still trying yeah. to figure out what it stands for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> M I F I D. It's the thing that says that you can't uh, basically sell brokerage advice and get paid for it doing the execution. It's you all have about to being charged separately for that. Correct. It's about being as transparent as possible. Sounds like a communist initiative. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest deal for MIFID is that it might start to impact the vertical integration that all of these exchanges have in common, which is mm -hmm. if if you want to buy the interest rate default swap on my exchange you have to settle through my part of my exchange as well yeah. through 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 the back office um, what this regulation states is that that might not be the case going forward they might have ah. to separate the two so that's another little nasty surprise but that's going to take a hell of a lot of work and effort yeah. to get going but that can be a negative for these like businesses. we said one of the key things that keeps your customer coming back is that the settlement is tied to your trading platform. Absolutely. The minute you say, well, look, you can settle independently and we'll have like a broad based clearinghouse that takes messaging in a unified sort of way, it limits people's yep. uh, loyalty, so to speak. Correct. Mm. So it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's unlikely to happen. It's just unlikely to happen soon. I mean, it's a big deal to start taking one of the world's biggest options and futures traders and say, uh, you need to start providing different offers for your, you know, where your is Mifid coming from? Is it sounds your like cinema. a UK type thing. So or Mifid is, is Europe. so Mifid is 
uh, exclusive for the European area. However, anything mm. that goes via Europe is part of MIFID. Mm. And because Europe and specifically London is such a hub for mm. the financial markets and exchanges, mm. almost any deal you do is going to touch on Europe. And therefore, if it does, MIFID is all encompassing. Mm. So it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, MIFID actually could affect us, for example, if we managing clients' money off offshore, even though they're South African and so on, but because the money is based offshore in the European area, but we're buying stocks in America, we're still mm. actually under MIFID. No. So <laughs> MIFID is actually all-encompassing. Okay, I have a friend who mm. was a New York Stock Exchange broker member, Ted Weisberg, who owns a firm we use there, and he then got NYX shares, and now he has ICE shares as a function of uh, evolution. He's doing very well, so as he's you smiling. can see. Yeah. <laughs> what would your advice be to him, though? Would you own these things in perpetuity? Because it's like a permanent you know thing that never gift that goes on giving or would you say listen this is as good as it's going to get general rule of thumb not not. nothing's invested for <laughs> perpetuity <laughs> unless it's a tobacco company <laughs> honestly um i think because of isis size and the massive amount of diversity they have mm. and they are really right at the top of their market i mean th there's very little that can actually unsettle them I would, I would de technically still be hot on hot ice, on this with on. the caveat of be careful for regulation that can come so on watch stream, that regulatory and stuff just closely. always watch the volumes going through the business. So watch those numbers yeah. every quarter to see if the trading is still very positive. But I'm actually quite happy with ice. I, I, I like it. Okay, Ted. So we're hot on this one. I'm going to show him the video clip when I'm in New York next.